Hello there. <clears throat> Welcome to the uh, 28th day of February, 2022. My name is Kurt Bell, and this is my daily good life meditation. Something that I do every morning, first thing after I get up, hair still wet from the shower, <laughs> to uh, remind myself of my life objectives and principles, and to see how I'm doing applying these. First, last night, and yesterday. It must be a Monday. I was up probably an hour before the alarm went off. Fully awake this time, not twilight sleep. Which kind of surprises me, because though Friday was a day off, <clears throat> I worked at least half the day trying to get my work in a settled place so that uh, specifically, well, not sp <clears throat> that's not right. I didn't do that so that I could sleep well. I did it because it, I needed to do it. It was the expedient thing to do for work, to devote that time on a day off for, for lots of cascading purposes or consequences. But I had hoped that it would help me to sleep. It didn't. <laughs> I, I did sleep well yesterday, kind of, but uh, that was to be expected given it was, <clears throat> it was a weekend. Oh well, so be it. Yesterday was a, a fine day. I didn't read as much as I would have liked to. I somehow wound up doing a lot of busy work. And then uh, Emiko and I went out and did some outings, which were fun. We uh, went um, uh, shopping for some things at the household, you know, at thrift stores and antique antique stores, really craft, not, not craft stores, but like um, boutiques type of places in Temecula. And we actually found, I found what I was after, and Yumiko did too. So that was nice. And then we had uh, a, a, something we had done in a long time. Um, Yumiko was in the mood for jack-in-the-box tacos. So instead of uh, finding a nicer restaurant, we simply uh, got tacos and some curly fries and sat in the parking lot at Jack in the Box and had lunch together. That was fun. We talked about some current events and other things. Altogether, yesterday was a good day. Although I wish I had gotten more reading in. Well, not just yesterday. The whole three-day weekend. I had big plans for the three-day weekend because I had Friday off, like I said. <clears throat> but I wound up um, consuming those plans with life. <clears throat> As so often happens. Hmm. All right, let's do the uh, good life meditation. <clears throat> First, my seven objectives. These are, number one, to have my life in circumstance, in a condition that, always in a condition, that should I die now, I don't leave <clears throat> behind too much trouble for my family. In terms of my finances, my relationships, and my life's work. And I think I'm pretty much there. Number two is to um, boy, I can't remember all of a sudden. <laughs> Usually the objectives are easy. More and more my memory is a problem. Gee, this is the first, usually the first seven are easy. Actually, I have to look it up. 
all of these are written in my book, going along. Oh yeah, make good and effective use of time right there. Do not waste my time. And I have a list here in the book of all kinds of things that <laughs> are considered good uses of time. Eating well and very little. Providing good value to my employer. Studying history. Becoming uncomfortable. Suffering well and longer than I thought I could. And I think my favorite, <clears throat> making a pet happy. Good boy, little Holly. I just covered up Ruby he, on his bed, and before I started the camera, I walked over with my blanket and put it over. He likes it now to put it all the way over his head. He's completely covered up over there. Let's see if I can carry on without any other reminders. <clears throat> Number three, the th third objective is to uh, develop and maintain good and sound life principles. Number four is to cultivate good emotional reactions. Number five is to perform good actions. Number six is to recognize my limits, my true limits, that is, and my true opportunities so that I'm engaged with reasonable ends or I'm engaged towards reasonable ends and not... <clears throat> wasting on my time or my my mental energies or my frustrations on things that are beyond me. And then the last objective is to do just one thing at a time and to do that thing slowly, carefully, deliberately. I'm noticing that I'm driving more slowly lately, like within the last three or four months since moving here to Menifee. I like that. All right, now, the 30 principles. Number one is the principle of war, to always be fighting against things that I think are true and things that others tell me are true that they wish I would believe. I'm going to critically evaluate these claims, especially my own. Number two is the principle of reason and the sub-principles of honesty, objectivity, and doubt, where I want to address the challenges of life in a straightforward, skeptical, reasoned manner. Number three is the homunculus, the suggestion that I do not have a soul, contrary to some popular opinion. But what I do have for a little while is this consciousness of me that seems to be the artifact of my biological thinking process. The next principle is called the anchor hold which suggests that that aforementioned consciousness is trapped in my head. Although I like to visualize it as a rock sticking out of the sea, a dangerous sea, and the homunculus on top of the rock. And there are other homunculi on their rocks around me. These are my families and friends, my family and friends. And there's lots of others. Everyone has their own rock. And everyone eventually winds up in the sea. The next principle is called the home of good and evil. The idea that ideas of good and bad and right and wrong are opinions that we maintain and hold on to and that they don't exist outside of us. <clears throat> the next principle is called purpose and it has three sub-principles. Biology, virtue, and mission. My purpose in life is to be a good husband and father. That's the biology part. To live a virtuous life where virtue is defined as the improvement of the well-being of thinking creatures in particular, but of all creatures if I can. 
where well-being might be boiled down to uh, happiness. Like my little dog is happy over there, and this one is too. I'm fulfilling some some end of purpose there by uh, facilitating that for them, giving them this space, this time, this warm room, and that warm and cozy blanket upon each of their little beds. Remember my uh, make a pet happy. <laughs> The next uh, principle is called the atomic principle. Everything is made of little bits and pieces, flowing and changing and forever transforming. So too you and me. We're just atoms and molecules and compounds. And uh, very soon what we are will uh, fall to pieces. And that'll be the end of us. Next is the principle of nature. These atoms, molecules, and compounds brought together have some particular nature. Those little bits have their own natures as well, I think. Their own weight and spin. But combined, they give us our nature. I like to, I used to describe myself and others. It was particularly curious to some when I would describe my wife and daughter, because I've had people quote me on this, when I would describe my wife and daughter as complex chemical reactions. But that's what we are, and the atomic principle reflects that. Or points to it. Next is the principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature, and that's the result of the composition of the compounds, molecules, and atoms, and their weight and spin, whatever momentum and inertia we've got. <clears throat> I just realized the connection between that idea and the next principle, which is called the pirate ride. It's that aforementioned weight and spin and inertia that lead me to believe that Human beings do not have free will. That uh, there are too many conspiring weights, spins, and inertia pressing against us in life for us to have to enjoy our own our own minds. We are uh, jostled and nudged towards every action and decision that we make, every motion and decision that we make. Even the seemingly, or especially the seemingly undecided motions. <clears throat> hmm. Next comes maturity. <clears throat> it's the principles of wisdom and fortitude. <clears throat> we are mature when we remember our past success and failure, and we're strong in doing better. Next comes the social principle. We humans need others. We don't do well all, all on our own. We need others. Next comes the principle of nature. No, sorry. Public speaking. My mind is drifting a little bit. Sorry, back on track. <laughs> public speaking, a recommendation to myself to be very careful about what I say or what I write, especially before I click the send button, to construct my sentences and paragraphs very carefully, choosing just the right words, to have a big, rich vocabulary but then use it sparingly. And to never, ever, ever, ever gossip.
Next comes temperance. And the sub-principles of suffering, simplicity, and apathy. Temperance is our controlled consumption of everything. And we uh, struggle a bit when we deny ourselves what we want. And the resulting life is a simple one. A place where we can use apathy to uh, not dwell too much on the things that are outside of our control. Next comes the horror show. Life is a, a horror show. Chock full of terror. And I want to remember that and help to alleviate the horror and to prepare myself for my own my own ration of that. Next comes a principle called that which must be born, born with an E, carried. And there's lots of things I have to carry as a, an adult and as a, a married father. I carry my responsibility for my family, which includes my job. Sometimes it's a tough job, a lot of times. It's been a tough career, but hopefully it's almost over. <laughs> I also bear other challenging things. <clears throat> I don't necessarily need to enumerate them. <clears throat> but for example, I'll, leave, I'll just give one. I, I bear the responsibility to... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> to help my mom through her uh, old age as best I can. As much as she'll let me. All right, after that comes the Feast of Ophel. It's another principle. It's the idea that there's this waste and byproduct of our uncontrolled living when we are getting upset at life in the world. We're telling the world about it. I don't want to do that. I mean, I can get upset at the world and I can tell the world about it, but... I would rather do that alone and in private. I don't want to others to suffer because I'm suffering. Now I can accept help. I'll tell my wife when I'm having a bad time and she'll comfort me and I'll do the same for her. But I'm not going <clears> to <throat> blow up and vomit my upset upon her or anybody else. And when other people are doing that around me, I'll strive to offer sympathy, <clears throat> to be there, but to not consume their upset, which soils others around them. The consequence of that un uncontrolled, unrestrained belching out of our uh, grief and upset and pain. It's a tough thing because. We want to help each other, but you have to be careful not to uh, just be passing the upset to others. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. All right, next comes... Hold on, let me check. I've been thinking that I've been getting it a little bit wrong at this point. But this is an old copy of the book. It might not be listed correctly. That after that, which must, the Feast of Ophel comes, yeah, distraction, the principle of distraction, followed by another principle called agency and the great indifference. And they kind of go together. We distract ourselves through work and play and hobbies, sports, whatever it is, so that we don't have to see the awful emptiness of the universe behind our living effort. After that comes the best seat in the house. To not want to be anyone else, be anywhere else, or be doing anything else, but to be okay with who I am, where I am, 
and what I'm doing right here, right now, right me. <laughs> that sounds strange. Next uh, comes a principle called the path of wildness, which is a, a way to push from one life to another life by collecting facts, giving ourselves time to think, and then making a decision, possibly influenced by our gut instinct. Next comes the risk of avoiding risk. A reminder that in addition to pursuing the surface level risks of education, career, family, home, saving for retirement, security, we also need to ad address, if we so feel so inclined, the deeper activity of uh, finding ourselves, so to speak, and living a self-actualized life. But only for those that are so inclined. It seems that that interest comes to a, in a greater or lesser degree in life. After that comes sin and damnation. And the sins in my worldview are falsity, being untrue, credulity, believing things too easily, hope, which is desire, uncoupled from action, faith, which is belief that rests upon belief, superstition, which is easy because it's a category of credulity that we recognize as nonsense, or potentially nonsense. Authority, which is belief because someone that really impresses us or, or an institution that impresses us claims it is true. Dogma, believing things because it's, been, it's a tradition. It's how everybody else believes. And there's a big old book that uh, claims it's true. And it's been around for a while. And then the last uh, sin is, again, gossip. And the consequence of these is damnation in the here and now, in the moment. Because we are, uh, end up going through our lives believing things that may not be true and uh, sullying ourselves, talking about others behind their backs which isn't good for anybody. Unless it's the type of gossip that is, well, then it's not really gossip, right? I mean, talking with a doctor about my mom's, you know, she does, my mom's fine, but if I was talking about, well, let's change it to my dad because he's gone. Talking to the doctor about my dad's illness, um, and I don't want him to hear because it might upset him at the moment, is not gossip. Okay. The next principle is called complete oblivion. Remembering that since I have no soul, and since it appears that there is no God or gods, no heaven, no afterlife, no eternity, at least no eternity is me. It's just my atoms, compounds, and molecules again. Mostly the atoms. Excuse me. <laughs> then, um, <clears throat> when I'm dead, I won't have a chance to reunite with those that I miss and love. But I won't be able to miss <laughs> or love. <laughs> and I won't have a chance to reconcile any hard words that I we left were left unfixed. And um, there won't be any chance to right wrongs or apply ju just desserts. Because it appears there is nothing following life for those that are no longer alive. Next comes the great life adventure. A suggestion to give ourselves one or more experiences in life that will become our story. And I recommend doing that in the 20s before, it's, uh, before we begin accumulating too much responsibility. And before we, if we choose to uh, take on the, res the responsibility of parent, of becoming a parent, 
becoming a spouse and a parent and a homeowner and all that stuff. Before that's a weighty, those are weighty tasks to take up a lot of time. So give ourselves that adventure early, so we don't mud, muddy up the two. But if we don't give it, we're probably going to regret that if we wanted it when we're young. The next principle is called the. Uh, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Oh, the season of philosophy, which is a time to record our thoughts, particularly those thoughts that bubble up like uh, uh, carbon dioxide when you pop the can on a soda pop. Sometimes ideas pop up like that. That's why I keep this board handy right here next to me all the time. I can write things down when the muse speaks. Muse has been largely silent lately. But that's all right. I already wrote down everything she had to say earlier. <laughs> she may be done with me. My, my, left, my left's work, I think, is largely complete. Back to that uh, second principle and first, first, first and second objectives, to be always ready to die and make good and effective use of time. I think I've done both with regard to my life's purpose. Those are pretty much wrapped up. It's just a matter of this daily sharing and tuning and living. And I've still got life to do, but it's different. Next comes, let me double check again. I feel like this is the area, that another one that I've kind of been messing up on. Oh yeah, it's, I got it right, so the bullseye aim. You know, throwing the, the throwing knife, trying to hit the bullseye, but usually I miss. Yeah. Uphill climb, steady, steady upward climb. Sometimes remembering to turn around and admire the view as I go. Next is arena and utility. Life is an arena for the use of these principles towards better living. The second to last principle is nothing is called nothing is enough. Sometimes less is better. And then the last principle is the principle of fun. It's not in this book because this is an old copy. Just a reminder to enjoy my life more. And I'm going to do that today. It's going to be a good day. I've got good work to do today. So let's talk about the day. Today I, uh, I can rest, on, I, I, can ca I can enjoy a lot of the hard work on Friday to enjoy that today because I'm pretty well caught up. Just one thing I need to do. Um, there's really three things I need to do. One, I need to send out the invitations for the big kickoff meeting. Two, I need to do a training first of a lesson in a training class that I'm doing. And then three, I want to finish reviewing the scope for the big contract. If I can do those three things today, that will be um, a very good day. It'll be a, a very satisfactory day. Uh, I think I can do all three of them. Well, anyway, I wish you all the best. Hope that you have a good day too. Let's do this. Be safe, but not too safe.